Hey there. I hope you're doing well today. This episode was an interview I did with Jim Masters, and it was so much fun. He's from Close Up Radio. He's won many awards, and I can absolutely see why, because what an amazing interviewer, collaborator, and so much invigorating energy there while being calming at the same time. So I thought I would share it with all of you. You can check out their show on blog talk radio forward slash close up radio. They interview so many different coaches and medical people and business and just a great variety of those that are leaders in their field. So I hope you enjoy. We've got a really fascinating guest who's joining us, intuitive coach Vicki Baird. She's in uh, Western Massachusetts in the beautiful Berkshires in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. I know uh, that area very, very well. Intuitive coach Vicki is uh, dedicated to assisting her clients to discover their gifts. She and I were just talking about that off the air moments ago. It's so important to discover your gifts, harness them, and share them with the world by connecting with your intuition. Vicki works with high-performing individuals to take, help them really take charge of their life, build self-confidence, and lead the most fulfilling life. She says her work is about introducing people to themselves. Now that, you may say, what are you talking about? Introduce me to me. No, and it's a really important thing because you might not really <laughs> have a full understanding of who you are and what your needs are and what, you know, you may have even put them aside uh, for the world. Right now, during the time that we're experiencing, a lot of people have been looking in the mirror and seeing the reflection and saying, who are, who is that person that I'm seeing in the mirror? So it really is important to introduce you to you. Knowing yourself means you understand what's really important to you and what choices are available to you. According to Vicki, developing our intuition begins with understanding ourselves first and foremost as an energetic being. She believes in the unique goodness in people. People can feel the disconnect within themselves quite easily. They don't know how to reconnect, how to release the conditioning that comes from all kinds of different experiences in your life, um, family, friends, work, life, society, uh, celebrity. I mean, there's so much conditioning that uh, we see in front of us. And also the traumas of the past, too, that and sometimes unresolved childhood issues that haven't been dealt with. The coaching, then, is a whole being approach, not just a whole person, but a whole being. Uh, where's your soul in all of this? What lights you up? What are your goals or intentions? While therapy tends to look in the past, coaching looks to the present and the future. Vicky's, uh, you know, going to go much deeper than a traditional coach. A CEO may want to improve their communication skills or effectiveness as a leader, but by the end, they're hopefully feeling more whole and it will carry over to all aspects of their life. She says, choice is a powerful place. Most people are operating on who they were told they are, who they were told they should be, who they were told they will only be. People are often afraid to look at their best, walk outside the comfort zone, walk outside that box that's been created. Her intention is to guide people to themselves so much they think they want to help others beyond that. And I think that's great because they're so content. They want to pay it forward. And Vicki does that all the time and all the work that does. Let's welcome her to this episode of Close Up Radio for a very intuitive and uh, inspiring and thought-provoking conversation. Vicki, welcome to Close Up Radio. It's a pleasure to have you as a guest with us today. We appreciate you joining us. I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me on. I love live radio and I love the content that you provide and how you're also helping people because, you know, we got to do everything we can do to help another as well as ourselves, I think. So thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And well said, I, I concur. It's, uh, it's really important when you can leave, you know, the room better than you found it. And I know you try to do that. We try to do that as well. And you've been doing this for a long time as far as 
realizing that this is in your DNA, this is work that you are meant to do. What were some of those early inspirations in your life to realize that you wanted to help others, you wanted to provide consults and comfort and solace for people through your work as an intuitive coach? Well, I, I'd like to say it was all awareness and cognitive and, and known up front for me, but that would be a total lie. Uh, what <laughs> happened, <laughs> it was, you know, and I think transparency That's what we love important. about you, Vicki. It's your authenticity. <laughs> 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 so I didn't know about intuition or energy or it's not the kind of home I was raised in. It was when I was working with these amazing women and it turned out that they were keeping track of when I was correct about what the boss was going to do. He tended to not be predictable to others, but I was like, oh no, this is coming up. Oh, he's going to do this. And they were keeping track. And they came back to me later, and they're like, you're really accurate. And I'm like, what are you ladies doing? Uh, and then, you know, I started feeling into that and wondering about it, and I was so empathic. I would pick up other people's pains, and, you know, if somebody had a headache, I had a headache. And so it wasn't that, you know, I was <laughs> also aware that energy even existed outside of science class. Uh, it just did what it's designed to do. I really believe that if you follow the breadcrumbs or if you pay attention, that everything will be revealed. And it turned out that I was really good at figuring out what was coming up next and ended up consulting with the CEO of the company, even though I was only a billing specialist. And it just rolled from there and to a point where Someone suggested that we take my middle son to a, uh, an intuitive because he had issues with the biological mother he chose in this lifetime, and we were at our wit's end. <laughs> so we took yeah. him, and I remember sitting there going, well, doesn't everybody know who we screen over the other people's heads? Like, don't, doesn't everybody mm -hmm. know what's coming up? And she's like, mm -hmm. uh, no. And I'm like, oh, Okay. And it just, it has rolled from there. I was doing readings while working full time. And then the readings were intuitive readings and they just caught on. And, but then eventually it got boring for me because I felt like it was another place that people were handing over their power. They were coming to me to find out what their life was going to be like. And I was like, I don't like this. Um, I want it to be collaborative. I want to work with you to create that. But if you're coming in here and you're giving me all the credit and the kudos and the power, then we're not making any progress. And so that's where coaching came in. That's really beautiful work that you're doing, Vicki. And, uh, you know, I mentioned in the introduction that, and I'm a big believer in this, that people oftentimes, they really do have the answers inside them but there's so many clogs and blocks and so much that has happened in one's life that it becomes a blur and sort of that light is sort of flickering and being extinguished because of all of the things that externally maybe we have made internal. I think the difference is that a lot of times people don't really have the opportunity to have conversations Conversations. Having a conversation where you're talking with as opposed to talking at. I mean, we, we're right. in a world right now where everybody likes to do all the talking but not really the listening. And you need objective opportunities to surround yourself with people who are objective, people who are not combative, people who are a good listening ear and not judgmental. And that's what's great about the work that you do specifically is you're not judgmental and you're there with your expertise, but also with compassion and empathy and understanding and can relate to what it is they're sending, you know, your way. And also have the ability in a understated way to ask the penetrating questions mm -hmm. so answers can be 
surfaced, not forced. They can just organically surface from the person, right? I, yes, very much so. And I think there's humor is very important. I use a lot of humor in my work yes. because, come on, this human thing is funny. Um, so, yes. But you also, in that objectivity, you have to, I think, have someone who's willing to ask the harder questions. Who's, and willing to sit with you in the response, not change your response or say you're wrong about your response, but to really be there and, and not sugarcoat it either. There's so much sugarcoating that goes on, even in the coaching world of, you know, everything love and light. It's like, no, the human thing is tough. So if mm-hmm. you have a place that you can, you can be in where someone like myself can hear you, not make you wrong about what you're feeling, but help you understand, did you contribute? What did you bring to this? How do you want to feel about this? Um, what's the work that needs to be done? And also not making it seem like this mountain we have to climb, because I really do believe, like you said, that everybody has the answers inside. They just can't remember where they put them. Um, or they've never been encouraged to seek them or to believe that they have the skill set to go looking for them. Um, so it's, it's important. It's important to have a safe place with a little bit of, of a nudge, you know, <laughs> a little bit of, mm-hmm. I see who you are. Would you like to see who you are? And, you know, that's where the introduction comes in um, because we're pretty good at putting ourselves down. Um, having learned that, but imagine if we had the authentic belief in ourselves, not the big fat head mm-hmm. ego thing, but that the part of the ego that's so adorable that does have us try new things. Um, I think mm-hmm. it's often been my place as that person to say, hey, I believe in you and here's what we need to do in order to get there. Oh, and then when someone really does not know what's going on with them, because we've all been there, right? We don't know why we're acting like a brat or we're, you know, we're spinning out a little bit. I can bring in my intuitive abilities that used to be there primarily for reading and ask a question in a way that opens up to the possibility um, because I can feel the pain that's in there. And sometimes nail the situation that created it so strongly that people are like, yep, that's it. Um, And then you have an opening and then you work from there. That's right. You find that opening and that's the key because sometimes, you know, there's cement in the way that needs to be loosened. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Uh, We ignite that flame that maybe has been sort of, you know, dwarfed in one's life. Um, Yeah. Tell us a little bit more yeah. about your background. I understand you were in finance before as well. What did start, <laughs> what really inspired you to take the leap and change everything about what you were doing? Although, pun intended, what you are doing is helping people invest in themselves. <laughs> Very much so, and even balance their spreadsheet. Uh, I do love a good spreadsheet. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Uh, that's why I like, like working with entrepreneurs and businesses because I'm like, oh, this stuff is so exciting to me. And yet the common denominator was people, right? So like I said, I was often in the CEO's office acting as that intuitive consultant, unbeknownst to most of the staff, um, and then realized, wait a minute, I'm here you know, in this capacity helping this corporation out that I love so much working for, um, that how can I do this full time as much as I loved, you know, consulting and helping businesses set up their, (laughs) their billing practices. And, oh, in the time of HIPAA, uh, the beginning of HIPAA, I realized that I really love when I see that light come on in somebody's face, like when you can see them, light up and it happened incrementally you know how they say overnight successes take 20 years well there you go 
um, mm -hmm. it happened incrementally. You know, there were my own challenges and struggles, literally, with this intuitive ability because I didn't know how to manage it. I didn't know how to be in the world feeling everybody's stuff. And, you know, at the time, raising three kids and working and volunteering, and it was a lot. But I can't say that I necessarily chose this. There was like a magnet on me that I had to kind of throw up my hands and trust that the trajectory I was on in, in corporate <laughs> wasn't going to be it, uh, but that this was much more fulfilling. And I really believe that, you know, I have to be authentic as well and following my intuition and not just telling people to do that. So that's pretty much how I do it. And it's gone through its different variations. Like I said, I did the readings and then the coaching came in and I worked with companies to help with the communication because so many times people think they're saying the same thing to everybody, but not everybody receives it the same way. So a lot of the times I can act as that interpreter of this is what your boss is saying, is this what you're hearing? I don't think that's what they're hearing. I think this is what they're hearing. And how can we clear all this up? Because I do think that most people want to be collaborative. They want to work together. We just have so many different backgrounds. And a lot of the time, we're dealing with adult children running around, you know, those pains that are mm -hmm. inside. And if that is considered... I'm not saying that we have to make every place a touchy-feely, ooh, kumbaya, love you place. I'm saying you just have a consideration that this person's hearing it differently. And and I, maybe you just need to say it differently. So it's mm -hmm. taken on its different, you know, iterations. And I follow. I really trust that <laughs> wherever I'm going, my soul knows. And I'm tenacious enough to figure it out. Right, exactly. The tenacity is a very important part of all of this as well. What, what are the conversations with your clients actually <laughs> like? How do they begin? I would imagine establishing trust is yeah. right out of the gate paramount, right? It's, it's very important. And one of the things that I am most proud of in my business is I have primarily worked word of mouth. So then there is a um, there's a precedent already set that if somebody referred you and said you need to go see this person, there's already a trust level there. So usually the conversations, if someone's meeting me for the first time, start with me doing what I call my download. And it's when I hear somebody's voice, I get this whole impression of their whole being, soul wiring, I call it a blueprint because it really does look like a blueprint to me. Um, and why are they here from a soul level? What are they here to learn? We're all here to learn something. And you know, what are their skills that they bring into this lifetime as well? And a lot of the times the first session is me taking the first 10 minutes to say, this is how I see you. And and then, you know, I don't believe I'm the end-all, be-all. I do say, does that seem like it fits? And usually the response is, ah, yeah. So when you're meeting someone for the first time and they're giving you a reflection of not only who you are but some of the challenges you may have faced, uh, it, it sets a, a stage for, whoa, okay, there's something going on here. And, you know, it... it Intuitive coaching can be quicker than the the investigative coaching or the asking a ton of questions coaching. coaching. <laughs> the coaching. I think I'm going to call it that from now on. Um, so <laughs> a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of the time you're not encroaching. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're not encroaching. I will not encroach. I have very good boundaries. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just because you have the ability to read doesn't mean you should read. <laughs> Um, so the, it, that it, then the sessions, depending if they want to do coaching, I still do you know a one time session if somebody wants that. But then I do the packages, of course, because the continuity is what's important, no matter who you work with. 
continuity is important. Um, and I think the accountability. And I am not the kind of coach that's going to say, did you do this? You said you were going to do this. If something that they've agreed they want to expand on or grow didn't happen, I'll ask why, what's going on? Um, what happened there? Um, is there a, is there a limiting belief system that's in the way? Cause we need to look at that and we can shift that with neural pathway work. So most of the time people <laughs> coming into the first session, they, they do get a little bit of a deer in the headlight look. Um, and I'm used to it now. Uh, so I, I'm kind, I'm gentle about it. Um, in all my coaching, but I will be firm if necessary. And then I ask, how can I help? Exactly. How can I help? Right. And sometimes maybe they don't even know how to answer that, but you end up finding ways that uh, allow them to emote. Because sometimes they may open up to you and tell you things they don't even tell their, tell their closest friends and or loved ones, um, which can be very revealing and very um, important for them to open and to get and to share uh, and again, in a very non-judgmental atmosphere, which I think is what makes it really extra important and um, meaningful and impactful that can really be long-lasting and life-changing in so many different ways. What um, what have you found, and again, this is sort of a generic question, but it really can be um, case by case, person by person, because everybody's an individual, it's not a cookie cutter approach, are there oh, some similar favorite. threads that you, yeah, it's not a cookie cutter approach. You and I, are we That's what I say to people. We think alike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, 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 we we're kindred it. spirits we and so many it. things here. Exactly. It's unbelievable. Um, some of the goals that the clients have or what can be individual to the person. Have you found a thread at all in what some of the client's goals tend to be? This is the part that's the most fascinating to me about my work because I, I don't specialize. I, I like people. Um, you, you have to want to do the work even if you don't know what the work is. Um, you have to be willing to, you know, haul your own part. But initially, I find people come for the, the standard things, right? They're, they want to progress in their career, relationships, developing their intuition because I teach that. Um, but ultimately, it seems to become about being comfortable with themselves, uh, learning to turn down that inner critic, whether it was programmed or natural, and then you know, charting a course for themselves that seems not only successful but fun and embracing of their soul and human self, and then what will they bring the world? And my belief is that if you hold a door for someone, you just brought the world a gift. So I'm not talking everybody has to step out and create, you know, this whole six-figure life will make you happy. Well, it might make you happy, but does it bring you joy? So a lot of the times people will come in, especially people who are successful in their own um, careers, they will come in wanting to amp that up a little bit. And then <laughs> the comment I get the most is, I did not know what I was signing up for. And I'm like, I know, isn't this fun? Mm -hmm. Like now, mm -hmm. you know, you've met your whole self. Now you can bring your whole self first and foremost to yourself and then out into the world. Because I really do believe that if everybody liked themselves, we wouldn't have as much conflict. We wouldn't have as much disparity in the world. Um, so I figure I'm just going to keep pushing on, doing as much yeah. as I can to help each individual, and then that creates the ripple effect, right? Right. So, yeah. That's so true, really, and that ripple effect is really, really important. Um, why do you love this work? Obviously, you love what you do, and I know when people do work that inspires others and lifts others and gets others to be able to see that reflection in the mirror and actually love it and appreciate it and find value in it, it's therapeutic and almost cathartic for you as well. I've been a big believer in not only leaving the room better than we find it, but also 
when you lift others and inspire others, you're inspired and lifted during the same process where you're doing it for others, right? Absolutely. It's a, it's an energy exchange. Uh, and everything that we do in this world, believe it or not, is an energy exchange. So I feel blown away most times that people trust me to guide them, to lead them, to stand with them in their own expansion. Um, I, I love it because I really do feel that everyone is doing the best they can. And yet there's another level that's accessible to us. If you're here as a human being, you're here to learn. You're here to expand. And I feel like I have the best, I always say I have the best clients in the world. People think they do, but I really do. Um, And because there's that collaboration, because there's that heart-centered and yet very practical um, approach, I, it's a gift. It's a gift that mm-hmm. I get to participate in someone else's joy. I call it my contact high. This is why I've never had to do any kind of substance because when somebody says, guess what I figured out? And it might be an awareness of why they were holding themselves back or something. Like when they're sharing that, I feel so lit up myself that I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, what else can be done? I got this. So, right. I, it, it, and that I I know is contagious, and then that helps me to help people or to give back to the world in a way because I've been given that gift as a result of me being willing to show up. You know, so it's important that people acknowledge that. Sure, we may be of service. Um, and yet we are doing this for our own soul's journey too. And that's fantastic. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Everybody wins and it's a beautiful thing. If people would like to make contact with you and learn more about the extraordinary work that you do. And again, you're based in Western Massachusetts in the Berkshires, but you know, you can work with clients here, there, everywhere. Um, the website would be, a good starting place, right? Because people yep. can learn more about you and, and there's some wonderful resources available on the website as well. Yes. So Vicki with an I, VickiBaird.com. And I set up a page for your listeners. It's VickiBaird.com um, backslash radio. If they go there, there's a free meditation. Um, as oh, that's a nice. Gratitude, grateful. Yeah. So VickiBaird.com so, uh, or at... Awesome. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Um, or at Coach Vicki Baird all across the social media. Um, and I have a course coming out, so there'll be some information, you know, coming about that of how to help people connect with this soul part of themselves. So we can walk around whole. Absolutely. Um, so again, yeah, the website, so, folks, is www.vicki, V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D. Dot com. That's the website to check out. If you'd like to have an opportunity to get a free uh, meditation, then you can write uh, or just go to the website, Vicki Baird, B-A-I-R-D again, dot com, and then forward slash radio, R-A-D-I-O. Yep. So take advantage of that. That's wonderful that you're doing that. Mm-hmm. And it's great work that you're doing, Vicki. And I can't believe that 30 minutes flew by in a New York <laughs> they minute. Do but fly, don't they? be wonderful to uh, chat some more and hear maybe some case studies, success stories, and things of that nature as well. But thanks for joining us on the show today. It was a real pleasure having you with us. Thank you for listening to Intuition, Your First Sense. I'm so grateful to have you here. It's like a gift to me every week. And speaking of gifts, did you know that you can purchase gift certificates on my website? vickybaird.com for yourself for others you can purchase coaching packages and gift those out so please head on over to vickybaird.com and purchase your electronic gift certificate <laughs>